All right, bring him in. Who is it? Corporatist boy? Hello? 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 Hi. Are you the one who wishes to debate me? Or um, discuss with me? Yeah, I guess. I don't, I don't. I think debate's kind of stupid. Maybe I can just like talk to you about some stuff. Sure. That's okay. Yeah. I mean, I, th I. What do you mean when you say debate's stupid? I fucking debate is like so valuable. It's like how you learn things. Debate's okay, but sometimes people get like really pissed off during debates. You know. Uh yeah. Well, I mean that happens. Uh, what's your what are your pronouns by the way? Uh, he. What are yours? Uh, she, her. Okay, that's based. All right, cool. Well, thanks. Uh, it is based to be he, him as well. Um, yeah. All right. So, uh, all right. So hit me with your hot takes. Uh, I heard you were pretty, you had some spicy things to say uh, down in, uh, down in the YouTube chat, <laughs> which what got you here in the first place. So let's, let's discuss, let's discuss your takes and we'll see what we can see if we can come to agreement or disagreement. Um, sure. All I said is that I was a fascist. Um, that's a, right, that's a pretty da damn. That's a great way to open the door. Fascist. Um, yeah, I mean, sure. at least you're honest about it, but all right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Hold on. Let me get, like, some of the policies I agree with, and then we'll go over them, okay? Yeah. Okay. Is my mic okay? Yeah, yeah. I can, I mean, I can hear you now. You just stopped talking for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm pulling up this stuff if that's okay sure yeah that's perfectly fine i, I was just gonna say like uh you know fascism has a let's just say a very colorful history um and uh yeah. it's very rare to find people who are willing to openly admit to being a fascist um in 2021 yeah. um which is you that's know true. Uh, it is i'll say uh i i will not grant you kudos for being a fascist but i will grant you kudos for being honest about being a fascist <laughs> certainly makes it a lot easier to find you people yeah, for sure. Um, let's go over some of the stuff. Sure. Okay. Uh, so I believe in like uh, forgiving student debt encouraged by post-secondary education. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't sound like a very fascist uh, talking point. <laughs> well, I'm more – I live like a fascist. I like like living – like the philosophy talked about by like uh, Giovanni Gentile, like, you know, loving life, disdaining suicide, stuff like that. Um, while like policies I agree with and like what I would do if I gained power would be very similar to like the, uh, the governor in Louisiana, Huey Long, a mm. long time ago, um, more of like a left wing type populist type sense, stuff mm. like that. Yeah. Uh, Huey Long was pretty strongly anti-fascist and also pretty strongly anti-racist. Um, I find uh, it odd that that would be your inspiration, uh, when you're I'm, embracing fascism. Um, uh, I mean, so I, I mean, I'm anti-racist. I don't think mm. being anti goes against fascism yeah um, i mean historically they would dis disagree with you um fascism not, is traditionally a ultra nationalistic um a ultra nationalistic uh worldview and and political philosophy um that sure. almost always ends up having at least some racial element especially in places like the united states where nationalism and racism or nationalism and white supremacy are damn near inseparable well, in America, I don't think you can be a nationalist and be a white supremacist. Um, that's just, I, I don't think you can. I don't think you well, can. Well, I mean, to... most nationalists would disagree with you. They're wrong. Uh, oh, I mean, uh... they might be wrong, but I mean, this is why we have <laughs> such things as, as systemic analysis, right? Like, um, yes. like th certain worldviews are going to lead to certain outcomes uh, based on how they're structured. And fascism is one that... Um, builds on nationalism and doesn't really tend to take particularly friendly to uh um anyone outside of a a sort of um what's the right term an arbitrarily determined in group which is then determined as uh, determined as the uh, nation yeah. like love in the for the in group hate yeah. for the out group yeah i mean that's very very yeah. closely associated with fascism uh historically sure. but also that's a problem of nationalism as well as you run into an issue of um being in of, of, of forever being on a treadmill of trying to define who is the nation and who isn't the nation it's well for me it's very easy to define like who of course is the it nation. is yeah. well it's always it's, very it's, easy for for fascists to determine determine who they are and who they aren't but it but when it's actually put into practicality in any way shape or form it's always more like, complicated when you say there's different like types of nationalism right you have like ethnocultural civic stuff like that mm-hmm so, like, most fascists, like Hitler, for example, 
uh, or national socialism, they were like ethno nationalists. Say Brazilian integralists, uh, they were uh, civic nationalists. They they thought all Brazilians uh, shared a common identity, no matter what race. Uh, hmm. That would be the, that would be like the same type of attitude as me as a fascist. I would have. Uh, I don't really care if you're Hispanic, black, white. Uh, if we're talking about America, uh, I think anybody uh, in this land can be an American. Um, there's a defined culture. Um, we're a melting pot. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm a territorial nationalist. Uh, mm-hmm. um, whatever. Yeah, that's that's what I would say. Yeah, I've had I've had some conversations with civic nationalists in the in the past, and at the end of the day, it often seems to me um, that the the concept starts to break down. Um, uh, pretty straightforward and and fall into um, often traditionalistic um, pathways mm-hmm. towards determining who is a citizen, who is a citizen, mm-hmm. and who um, who who isn't a citizen. Um, and I think sure. it's pretty hard. Don't you feel like it would be pretty difficult to um, to like separate the idea of like uh, like rigid citizenship and 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 with with like extreme state control. Um, with like the history of um of white nationalism and in, in in or not or sorry white supremacy in the united states like we have a history of, of purges of of people that we don't agree with of people who look different than us i feel like that's very difficult to separate wait you think there's something hold on, say that again so you think it's difficult to separate between like the history of white supremacy with america and then like being american Oh, absolutely. I think that's very difficult to do. Um, the concept of like Amer- of like what is an American identity and what is an American citizen has has very much been informed in the past by white supremacy. And also so has the entire conversations around who is the ideal citizen. Well, there, first of all, my goal, uh, an ideal citizen in America, mm-hmm. I don't really care. Uh, race it has nothing to do with it. Right. Um, an ideal citizen for me would just be a, a strong not really, maybe not even a strong person, uh, but just a a a good person. Um, uh, no matter what race, um, seems no matter very what vague, th- doesn't it? Like, aren't there a lot of ways to define a good person? Um, maybe, but like, I don't know. Just just when we're talking about like what an American is, it's just <clears throat> right now it's a very like vague thing. Uh, it used to not be a vague thing. I uh, strong. It's... I would love to know the time in history in which it was not a vague thing to be considered an American. Um. Bef- probably before uh, the Italians and Irish when they when we had lost. Sorry, you're starting to you're starting to break up. Your like signal is starting to break up a little bit. Is there like a way that you can get into a solid location where your your sound might not break up as much? Uh, I'll try to just like talk closer to my mic. Yeah, that does help. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, like an exact um, probably before I don't know. Probably before like 1871. Before like a big immigration wave with Italians and uh, Germans came. So you're saying um, that like for like the last basically century and a half, we haven't had a good idea of what American was. Would you uh, even, do we... you even know if you would count as an American at that point in time? Yeah. I'm Anglo-Saxon and I'm Christian. And that was like a big thing. Wait. Um, so wait a second. Do you now notice what we're starting to talk about again? Right. We, you, you what? just, you've just revealed that this is actually that your idea of citizenship of when we had the idea of what an American was, was a period in which if you're Anglo-Saxon and, and Christian, then that gets, then that was what, that, that, that would make you no. count as a, an American? No, I think, no, I think we had an American identity. Uh, there was like a set American identity culturally um, before 1871. Then when big immigration wave started happening, we kind of lost that sense of identity. Um, now it's a very vague thing to be an American. Right now, the way I define American, just like now presently, uh, would be essentially anyone who's in you know the country. Yeah, I mean that's because you know we don't live in an age of hyper nationalism anymore because the hyper nationalism turned out to be a um, laughably bloody and stupid way of separating the world. Like, like how? Wait, like it led to two world wars. Like the the world being hype like. All, in in the turn of the century, the world was at its most national, like nationalistic position that it had has ever been at, and there was nations right. were highly, highly invested in their national identity, and this led to um to two world wars, like in a row. They were. That, think nat- yeah, yes. No, no, that's kind of retarded. Excuse me. I mean, that's really stupid to say that World War Two was caused by nationalism. 
<laughs> not really. I'm sorry. By... I'm sorry. Wait, are you being are you being serious now, or do you just know nothing about history? I mean, I'm being serious. It's stupid to say nationalism calls like wars. Wait, wait. Say wait. Wars nationalism are is the like things. is probably the single most influential. Like, uh, I like nationalism is like probably no. the single most uh, motivational push in World War One. Absolutely, World War wait, One. Yes, it absolutely was. World War One was a, a erupted over an a, over an assassination in Sarajevo, which which happened specifically along nationalist lines. Nationalist factions were the most predominant uh, political um, powers in nearly every nation at, at during World War One. Like what? Like. I'm sorry, like, that is just your, you were telling a historical falsehood by saying that nationalism wasn't, at the very least, one of the most influential, um, like, through lines of both of the world wars? All right, so, all right, so, um, when it comes to World War II, I think the biggest thing that, like, caused it, uh, was probably, like, the Treaty of Versailles. Germans felt, like, really cheated about of that. Of course, yeah, I mean, of course, of course, you, okay, so yeah, of course, you're a fascist, so, of course, you would conclude that, like, the Treaty of Versailles was the only cause of that. You do realize that there was like an, inc an incredible amount of nationalistic tension all across Europe at the at, at the beginning of the of the Second World War, and likewise, you, likewise in Asia, that was the exact same thing that was going on. You had Imperial Japan, a strongly nationalistic nation, it desiring to impose its nationalistic worldview on the rest of Asia. Wait, that wasn't because of nationalism. That was because of imperialism. Wait, imperialism and nationalism go hand in hand. You cannot have it. Oh, no, they don't. Yes, they no, absolutely they... do. Oh, no, they don't. No, they okay, don't. Okay, wait. I, um, uh, just real quick. I just have a, a I real. Like... Just have a real quick question for you. How old are yeah, you? Yeah, sure. I'm fifteen. You're fifteen. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that makes. So, I'm, not... I... I'm sorry, but that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Um, um, like you clearly haven't like had like a whole lot of historical education yet, and that's okay. I'm not like shaming you for not having that, but I highly, highly recommend you do more reading on history and understand how incredibly, incredibly um, tied uh, imperialism and nationalism are. They are re okay. they are like right. married at this point in time, especially like like fuck like. I don't even think I don't even think you could you you could go back to fucking Roman imperialism and argue that there's nationalistic elements even right. even in in the pre even before you had the existence of like modern states. You don't think you can be anti-imperialist and be nationalist? Oh, I think you can be I think you can be um anti-imperialist and nationalist, but the understanding of nationalism for anti like anti-imperialist nationalism is totally different and even then I would have critiques for it. For example, I think that um Irish nationalism um is a largely anti-fascist um movement. No, no. That's not true. Like Oswald Mosley the founder of the British Union. What? Sorry, you're breaking up again. Can you like keep your phone like Sure. Yeah. So like are you familiar with like the Irish blue shirts? Um, not that particular faction, no. Off the All top right, of my head, no. They were Irish national fascists who very opposed, like, British imperialism. Yeah, like, well, is this, like, 10, 15 people? I was thinking more of, like, Connolly and, and, and stuff like that. You never heard of O'Duffy? O'Duffy? No, not this guy. Oh, uh, that yeah. doesn't matter then. The British Union of Fascists, Oswald Mosley, it was very, very against imperialism. Mm. Um, well, and, I mean, uh, guess what? Uh, that's great, but that doesn't mean that he was like he was onto anything. Like, there's lots of people who've opposed imperialism in various ways and still been wrong. Um, right. I, and again, I do think, while I do think it's possible for certain types of nationalism to oppose imperialism, I think there is um, there is uh, innate risks in nationalism, and also, um, uh, and also, um, like nationalistic movements like uh like irish nationalism are predominantly um understood at least uh through at least via uh political philosophy very very different than um movements like german nationalism uh yeah i don't yeah i'm not a national socialist well i mean we'll find out i guess right because like i mean you are a fascist so you're like 90 percent of the way there like what do you feel like i just just out of curiosity like what do you feel do you like how do you feel about jewish people I'm fine with Jewish people. I'm a Christian. I worship a Jew. You, um, you, you what? Sorry. Um, I'm fine with Jewish people. I'm a Christian. I worship a Jew. Okay. Um, yeah. I don't. I don't like national socialism. Yeah. Um, 
You, yeah. Do you find it concerning though that like a lot of your like worldviews seem basically to set up the like they they basically tee tee up the ball for 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 Nazism? Like no, like they basically everything they, in almost every single way that you've expressed so far. Not really. I mean. I don't see how, like I told you, I'm against like racism, um, like a terror deck, like the idea of like nationalism. I well, yeah, but you, lie. but sure, surely you recognize that like being against racism, like saying you're like, like vaguely sort of saying you're against racism doesn't necessarily mean that the system that you would build would do anything to combat racism. Like it for example, well, it would. It would. I don't know. I, I haven't, I don't but, know of any, like, I, I'm not aware of any uh, success. <laughs> Let's just say again, the historical yeah. record on fascism shows that it doesn't do a particularly good job at dealing with those things. I think the USSR did good things with ending racism. Do, sorry, what's that? You think like the USSR did good things with ending uh, not, racism? Not, I mean, not really. I mean, that's like a communist, like they didn't do really good jobs of it. Well, I wouldn't really. I mean, I think that that's stretching the definition of communism. Like the USS, the USSR identified strongly with the ideology, with like the the, the trappings of communism. But yeah, as we as we know, as we know, because of the like the infighting in the USSR, like there was not an agreement on whether this was an accurate application of any of the ideas of of communism. And Stalin was a dictator. Like I I am not a Stalinist. I don't really. I have. I like. I think that the yeah, Soviet okay. model didn't really succeed. Okay, okay, base. So you're not a Stalinist. Yeah. Uh, you disagree with the things the USSR did. I'm a fascist. I disagree with 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 uh, what past fascist states have done. Well, yeah, I recognize that. Like, just because that, like, um, certain fascist. But I mean, like, I would argue that that like Stalinism, not only what did it not actually embody basically any the of the Stalin of the uh, not excuse me, um, not only did yeah. it like not even come close. It it like explicitly. Um, was it was it was explicitly um what's the term um what like a authoritarian uh, no 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 um sorry I'm I'm slipping on the term right now um it was uh not ref oh, what's the fucking why uh revisionist like it was it it they they literally Stalin wrote his own version of communism that he called this which was like in my opinion highly highly it actually resembled fascism in a lot of ways um. Like Wait, as far as actual Leninism? structure, what's Wait, that? You think Marxist? You think Marxist Leninism, like <laughs> copied fascism in any way? Um, yeah, in some ways, yes. Marxism Leninism is like a deeply flawed ideology, in my opinion. And I um, think yeah, is a very what's that? Ideology. Sorry, I think communism in general is a very flawed ideology. Maybe, but I mean, we're that's that's certainly possible, and I think there are flaws in like a lot of um. Well, there are flaws like, in every ideology. Yeah, of course. Of course there are flaws in every single one. But I mean, like, um, when we're talking about, like, so, like communism. Of, what's that? Sure. So, like, you, you would agree uh, that the USSR was ran by communists, right? It doesn't matter what type um, they were. No, um, but they I were don't really think so. Like, I think that a lot of the people, I mean, a lot of the people who ran the USSR at the end, like, I don't think Stalin, like, like, to me, Stalin seemed to me to be, like, sort of the... Uh, the epit like sort of historical epitome of like an opportunist like he took the advantage of this revolution killed yeah, every I, killed I, everyone else involved in it and then named himself as the leader of it i don't know to me that seems like a a pretty like right. um severe like usurpation of what was intended to happen and while sure, there were so. certainly like some elements of like uh economic theory that were put into place um i don't really i mean he more or less made a state capitalist society under a dictator and now it doesn't right. exist anymore. So it doesn't, it doesn't really matter if you know what he put in place. He was a socialist. Um, I don't he know. believed with like it doesn't yeah. it doesn't really no, he, wait does that no, actually... no 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 he believed in the worker season the means of production and he believed in um, decommodification. He was a socialist. I mean um, I don't know like I, I, I that <laughs> seems really that seems like a stretch to me. It seems like um it seems like you could kind of like put that on anybody. Uh, it, w what we see by his actions is that he wrote an he wrote an ideology that was designed to point all sources of power to himself. He was not a worker. He put he put his friends in charge of everything. He was deeply corrupt. And okay. like I don't know. I don't so uh, I I don't know I I don't really understand what what the point is like here on this particular point, um, but like no, yeah. Do you not see what 
getting at with that. No, you know what I'm saying? I don't actually. You can... Sure, it doesn't matter. So you say Stalin's not a socialist. I don't think Hitler was a fascist. I mean, sure. Okay, so that's fine. If you don't think Hitler was a fascist, well, then what do you think of fascism? What are you? What are your? Uh, what is that? What is it that you want to put forward? And what, what do, do you I... define fascism as? I oh, like my definition of fascism. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I do feel like it's a little bit like Hitler and Mussolini are basically the the historical definitions of fascism. But that's fine. We can move. We can move past that if we want to. Sure. And I can name fascist if you want me to because hitler wasn't one of them he was a big materialist and fascism is very against materialism okay yeah. um what do you what when you when you say materialism in this context what do you mean um sure so like hitler like saw man or like people as like strictly what their genetics was while fascism is always about like judging people by like their spirit and their character of their action while hitler was more of like judging people by their genetics Uh, I don't know about that. Um, like, <laughs> that feels you like you're reading a lot of intent. Um, like, uh, but like, like Hitler's regime was like obsessed with, um, with the concept of like, of like the German Volk of like, like what was, what was the right, like the right way, the spiritual right way to be like a, uh, a German. And it just so happened that Not like they baked, they happened to bake lineage into that, which tends to happen all the time when you they have these. Yeah. No. The, the whole thing with the Vogue was like them trying to like revise like uh, their cultural. Well, tradition. yeah, but you just you just advocated for that just a few seconds ago when we were when, no, no, when we were talking. Said, wait, when we were talking earlier, and I asked you like, well, then like you don't think America has an identity now? You said we should roll back no, to the to to 1871. That, Sounds like the exact misinterpret- same thing that Hitler did. No, you must interpret misinterpreted what I said. I don't think we should go back to judging Americans by being white Anglo-Saxon Protestants. Okay. I think the way we we should judge Americans now is this if they're American, then that's that's how they get their citizenship. Okay, so what does it mean um, to be American to you? Uh to be in America. Um okay. so, so that means you you believe that like all all current like <laughs> undocumented immigrants should be granted uh, yeah, citizenship? Right right yeah, right right now. Uh uh-huh. right now we should probably start trying to uh give citizenship to illegal immigrants. Okay. Um yeah. Uh and then try to like I don't know, make it like more like set up some type of system so it would be easier for immigrants to like assist American culture. Um Yeah, maybe maybe like maybe like make it some type of way to recognize what an American is. Okay. Uh so immigrants come here and assimilate to like what we would see as like an American identity. Well you but see now now that is where it starts to get questionable, right? Like because it's yeah, like we don't... okay, so you so what you're saying is that like uh, we need to come up with an idea of what like a pure American is, and then we need to make everybody else the same as that. Um, not real, not the same as that. I mean, we're that's a very what assimilate diverse. means. Well, it's we're a very diverse country. I think that's kind of base that you know. But what I'm what I'm saying is that I don't well, yeah, know, we're maybe diverse we're... because we're not we we're not assimilationist here, like at all. Well, I mean, well, some of us are. Mm-hmm. We have a faction that's assimilationist, but we're not not really. We, we we're we're diverse. Um, because we haven't simulated, sure. Um, but I do think we should hold, like, some type of a simulation. Like, I think people should, like, maybe we should recognize, like, English as, like, a national language so people would be able to, like, Why understand. English? Would you be okay if it was Spanish as the national language? Not really. Why? Because people don't speak Spanish here. Well, yeah, they do. A lot of people do. What about Chinese? Sure. A lot of people speak Chinese in America. I mean... How many how many English like um how many people speak English compared to Chinese? Oh, here? I mean does does the number is the number the only thing that matters? Why should we choose English over anything else? Uh, we're, wait, uh, wait, we were found should in- we wait, were we found on that? Well maybe we should choose a Native American language instead. Why? Would you be okay they with that? F- no, because they didn't find America. Well they literally did they literally did before <laughs> we did. Their constitution of the United States of America. When did they write it? What Native American wrote that? Oh, I mean, I don't, are, I don't know. The, like, I don't know like, the lineage of every single person. It's kind of weird that, like, you know, like, like most of the white, most of most of the like white like, landholders, no. most of the white landholders were the ones who imposed the laws on everybody else, and 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 then also, you know, conveniently um, <laughs> com- uh, unfolded genocide on the Native Americans. I don't know, like, yeah, I don't know. 
you like an ethno nationalist? Do you think that like Native Americans are like the only people who should be like recognized as American? No, not at all. I mean, but you're trying to define. Oops. Wait, I, wait, hold on a second. You're the one who says that we need to have a definition of what an American is, and then you and <laughs> you advocated that we would. Yeah, because I want to put. I won't. Can you? Because yeah, I can't. Can you um, hold on for a second? Like, you're, you're, first of all, your mic is breaking up like really bad. So it's making it yeah. hard to understand what you're saying. And then you're also cross talking. So, um, what do you mean? I'm you're, you're, you're like, when I'm trying to explain something, you're talking over me and then it's going like bah, 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 because it's like breaking your, your mic is fucking up. Um, sure. So then you, you advocated that we should have English be the national language. And I wonder why it would be English and not anything else. And also your reaction to me saying, well, why not Spanish or why not um, a, like a Native American language since they were here first? It just seems to me like you're trying to find sort of a post hoc reason to have English conveniently, the language most speaking think... by white people, be forced upon everybody else. Wait, you think – well, no, most Europeans don't speak English. Um, and I don't know. I just think like English is generally like what people speak in America. Okay. Like, sure. Yeah, I think English, English is like, like there's a difference between like, would you agree with me? There's a difference between like the state and like the nation. Um, right. The, mm, the na depends no, on what uh, context. Sure. So the nation is like the people. And then the state is like uh, the the body that governs the people. Mm, I don't know. That feels like uh, uh, that feels like a stretch to me. I don't think that it's as easy to disentangle those things. Maybe in like an, a very very idealistic um, like if you're totally going like 100 percent clean. But nah, usually nations are represented by the states that that claim control yeah. over it. Yeah. Yeah. Nations are represented by states, but there's still a difference between a nation and a state. And also, English is like the most popular language in America, so I think that would make the most sense to recognize. That so, but what if it was like? What if it wasn't like? What if um? What, what if, if what if English wasn't? Yeah, yeah. I what would, if like well, like what if in like like forty years, like Spanish is the most spoken language? Would you accept then, Spanish being the the national language of America? That wouldn't happen. Uh, well, okay, like, but what if it did? Let's just let's just go there. What if it did? Would you be okay with that? Well. well I, if Spanish was the net, was like the most spoken language in America, sure, I'd be okay, okay. with that. So like, so you not. would be okay if like you, you do you speak any other languages besides English right now? Nope. Okay. So if forty years from now, um, you were why would it be forty years from oh, now? Whatever. Like, 40, 50 years from now. Let's just say it doesn't no, matter. This no. is a hypothetical. Do you know understand what a hypothetical is? Yeah, I do, but I think it's my point. Okay. So um uh so. What what I'm trying to say here is to, what I'm trying to point out to you is that um, uh, is that like if 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 you're if you're advocating that we force a national language onto people that we define this as necessary as a necessary part of American identity, then by your own standards uh, and and the standard by which you decide which language it is is the most popular one. Then forty years from now, if Spanish takes over as the most popular language, you should be perfectly well, fine. It? Well, it doesn't matter why; just say it does. No. It but what I'm saying is, like, say, say, or English and language. You're totally roboting right now. Okay, hold on. Let me mute myself and then unmute myself. See if that works. Okay. okay. So, say if you know if we already recognize uh, America, the if English is already recognized as the national language, sure. And we're already for we're already forcing people to speak English. How how would it change to Spanish? Well, what if it just does? What if, like, tons and tons of people just start... Wait, hold on a second. Wait, wait. it's really simple. It's really simple. Like, what happens if, say, uh, there's, a there's, like, a large push of people who are like, hey, Spanish is a really beautiful language, and, it and like, there's a, like, super Rosetta Stone, for example. You know Rosetta Stone, uh, the program? The state, the yeah, so tons of people like just learn it, and more people are speaking Spanish than English. Would you be okay with being forced to learn Spanish in order to maintain your citizenship? Uh, no. Well, then I guess it seems it seems like you have a little bit of a it seems like there's a little bit of a hypocrisy there. It seems like you're basically no. finding post hoc no. like policy no. reasons to justify English being the primary language in the exact no. same way that other no. people yeah. would, like white nationalists no. and stuff. No, you're just trying to equivalent me with a white nationalist. Well, no, I'm not. I'm telling you, like you I'm are. pointing out where these things run, like these issues that we would run into. First of all, okay, okay. So if we take this seriously. 
uh, first of all, people don't just change the language they're speaking in, especially when there's already a national mm-hmm. language being recognized. Okay. Um, if the state is forcing people to speak English, uh, people would not just be like, we speak Spanish now. The state would be just like, oh, okay, yeah, sure. Okay, no, well, here's just- another one then. Here's another hypothetical that you might like more. What happens if it takes you 40 years to get uh, to get the I you know to get to the point where we're gonna have a national language. It's just this is just a. Uh, um, this is so, this is so stupid. No, no, I'm just I'm just asking. I'm trying to get to the root. Why I'm asking you these questions is the reason why I'm asking you these questions because I'm trying to get to the root of your rationale behind these things because I don't understand why. Very, I don't understand. Wait, listen. I know you want to la- like try and do some sort of weird laugh. I don't really get it. Um, but. Uh, but, uh, what I'm trying to point out is that, like, I don't understand why a national language must be imposed in order to build your sort of fascist country. That was the first thing that you brought up as, like, an important part of your ideology, is that we need to have a national language. Not an important part. I just think, like, some, like, I think just, you know, people in the general country should probably be able to speak the same language. And I think English would be that, because, I mean, throughout our history, people have speaking English. Um, and yeah, that would be why. And also English is like the biggest language right now, uh, and has been throughout our country's history. Um, well, yeah, I mean, depends why. on, depends on what you define as the country, right? Like well, if you mean co- like, if, if you mean like, yeah, when, when like the colonies, uh, what, which, you, you know, do- enforced themselves on the people there. And then they, when they came together, they sort of determined that like, um, they, they sort of determined that this was the language that most people are going to speak because, you know, the influx of immigrants to the United States. No, there. wait, wait, it doesn't matter. Our country was founded on people who speak English. Okay, so then would you be okay then if, um, if like, tomorrow, if there was, like, an uprising of Native Americans and they just killed every white person that they saw and then, impo- and then made a new government and then they imposed a language? They could. Would you? They could try. Wouldn't you? Well, Okay, but would you be okay with that? Is what I'm asking. If no, they tried to kill me. Why the fuck would I be okay with that? Well, I mean, that's what happened to them, and you seem to be okay with that. that I'm not okay with it. Okay. That's how stuff happened. Well, okay, that's how stuff happened, but then if we're trying to determine how things should happen in the future, obviously, if you're not okay with that, we should probably try to avoid things that um, cause that or that, that could build more exactly. into those things, so, right? Avoiding, avoiding things that cause that. What do you think calls that? What do you think calls people, you know, being – what do you think calls uh, Native Americans being, like, slaughtered by oh, people? Oh, um, like, uh, incredible, Im- incredibly, um, incredibly nationalistically fueled um, uh, colonize- Na- yeah. colonization. Colonization, yeah. yeah. It was just people making a country, and they didn't like It's the not just people already- making a country, my dude. Like, again, this is, where, this is where it's, like, very clear that you haven't actually read a whole lot of history. And, and- What history? Wait. Do you know anything about, like, the colonization of the Americas? Do you know how bloody of an affair that was? This was literally people who were sent heavily armed to go take land forcefully. You don't just make yes. a country. It's not, like, a peaceful thing. This was an incredibly yes. violent I never said act. Peaceful. When did I say it was a peaceful thing? You just did, like, happened. two seconds ago. No, I didn't. Okay. Your, your mic is breaking up again. I don't know. Like, do you have a bad signal where you're at or something? Yeah, I'm poor. Okay. Well, I don't know if there's a way that you could boost up the signal, because um, it would it's making it a little bit hard to to discuss with you. But that's okay. Like I I want to be able to have this conversation. It's just like you keep roboting, yeah. and I can't hear what you're saying. Like started talking, you just got into like you tried to equivalent me to a Nazi. I haven't tried to equivalent you to a Nazi. It's just that the most famous fascists in history, the most famous fascists in histories were Nazis. So I think it's a re- I think it's a relevant question to ask. I told you. I told you how I felt about him. I said I'm not a Nazi. Well, yeah, like but Nazi. like just saying, just saying, like I don't like Nazis. Like anybody would do that, right? That's like the. That's like no. if. Yeah, they they really like anybody would no. disavow the most infamous version not of their if, ideology. Not, if, not if like you know, not if they're actual Nazis. No. I'm not well, a Nazi. Uh, I've argued a lot of Nazis, and they usually try to pretend that they don't really like that until until they go mask off. See Nazis, Nazis, it's like what's that? Nazis. I'm sorry, you robot it again. 
I don't think you can be I don't think you can be a Nazi and then be ashamed that you're a Nazi. Oh, I don't think they're ashamed. I just think that they know that people hate their guts for good reason and therefore um they hide it when they're in public, not because of shame, but because of tactics. They want to try and rope people in and they do so by being very dishonest. This is something that I've encountered with many Nazis yeah, in the Yeah, 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 it's called optics. Uh, it's not really optics it's more like i mean it is i guess it is a subset of optics to some degree but yeah it, it's 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 they they hide their power level is what a lot of um nazis and fascists tend to do on the internet they they, they try to make I, themselves look clean and nice and then when you dig down into their ideas you find out that they aren't as clean as nice as they say what do you mean by clean and nice oh that they usually just end up often just espousing like really really gross hatred and and murderous intent and they're usually pretty bloodthirsty and they believe in a view a worldview in which they for some reason deserve dominance over other people that's what i usually encounter with fascists yeah, and nazis anybody who believes in any type of superiority is kind of cringe well i mean um, isn't fascism like an inherently superior uh superior no. uh what's the right supremacist view worldview I would argue that it is. No. Have you read the doctrine of fascism? The doctrine of fascism? I've studied fascism pretty extensively. Okay, I haven't read so, any like, like fanfics, but yeah. You read like Giovanni Gentile, like Benito Mussolini, like Cornelio Contrano, yeah, a little bit here like, and there. Like who? Like what books? Oh, I mean, oh, are you are you asking if I've like read all theory or anything like that? Oh yeah, I'd like. Yeah, I don't really read a whole lot of fascist theory, to be honest. I find it mostly boring. I I find history to be much I'm more like. interesting, and like sort of, um, I much prefer to study, uh, like, uh, like like meta analysis, like because I don't I don't always think that going to the root text of everything is the only way of understanding it. Like for example, I don't think that mm -hmm. um I don't think you need to have read the entire Bible to recognize that there are flaws in Christianity. For example, um, There's, I don't the... I don't think you have to have read. Um, every single letter that was written by Stalin in order to know that Stalin didn't do a lot, did like a lot of things wrong. So, Zero yeah. Flaws. Huh? Zero flaws in Christianity. Well, I mean, you can say that. That's fine. I would expect a Christian to say that they believe there's zero flaws in Christianity. But as somebody who was a Christian for a very, very long time, um, it's, uh, you know, I think there are flaws uh in not only the were teachings you, but in the fold out yeah were you were you catholic no i was not catholic were you protestant yes i was N that makes sense why you think there's flaws in christianity sure i mean i mean of course you would say that. i mean that's the christians like that's the first thing that christians always go to is they um they go oh well you probably weren't a real christian unlike me and then five that's years that. and then five <laughs> years down the line when they have a crisis of their no. own faith if or they no, just sure. delude themselves and don't ever actually you no, know, no. Look any deeper. It's some Protestantism, like sola scriptura. Like there's legitimate problems. Oh um, sure. I mean, just you know, like uh, I, I love the I love the idea that just because like a church that has been like uh that's had like endless inner politics and and atrocities within it is somehow like a perfect organization and somehow is able to design like a but okay. but i feel oh, like I, we're getting i feel I, like we're getting off the point here i i'm rather familiar we, with we i'm rather we familiar are. with with catholicism and it's uh so-called uh like pure lineages and everything it's just it's it's again it's one of those things where like hey, um I would like to, I don't, it's I don't super know super got, what's bro, that there's some there is some uh, there is some bad stuff around the um, – there's some dogmas around the Catholic Church, but uh, no, it doesn't matter. Also, uh, do you – never mind, this doesn't matter. Can we get back to, like, talking about, like, what fascism is? Yeah, sure. Um, sure. sure. So what is your definition of fascism? What is my definition of fascism? Um, yeah. Fascism is a uh, ultra-nationalistic, highly, um, uh, highly hierarchical – a uh, political worldview that has a focus on state on uh n i should say national power which usually breaks down into um uh into state power um and uh highly centralized generally highly centralized government a focus on um traditionalism usually a, a focus on patriarchy and a focus oh, on sorry. national um national supremacy what's uh what do you mean by patriarchy Oh, I mean, just historically, every single fascist movement in history has been highly patriarchal. What do you mean by that? I mean, what, what do you mean they put men above other people. That's oh, what they believe. Oh, men above. 
Yeah. Oh no, that's dang, that's really wrong. Then, like Oswald no. Mosley, first feminist, like one fourth of the BUF was women. Sure. Yeah. Wow. Well, I mean, that means seventy five percent wasn't, and normally there's fifty, fifty, fifty. What? 50, that seems like a little bit of a little bit of a scuffed mix up there. Wait, for, for women back in like you know the nineteen twenties to oh, be like uh, one now you got the now you're doing the Stalin thing, right? Oh, it was a different time, right? Well, no, I'm not saying that, but for like like the white but for the 1920s, women being part of a political movement, decently high, and the things that he advocated for, like you know, women having place in like workplace democracy, like no, mm-hmm. like no. Um, also, like in Nazi Germany, like you know, uh, women um, like women employment went up by like 2.4 million, which left like more women in the workplace than America and in England. Like I don't you really know, think like, that's like the best takeaway from Nazi Germany. <laughs> Well, no, the best takeaway from Nazi Germany would be like it failed and was bad. Yeah, it but failed for we, a lot of reasons. That 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 hyper nationalistic, hyper patriarchal. Um, that is not. That is abso- absolutely. Ex- that no, is absolutely no. what. Like I just feel like I feel like I'm talking to somebody who's never who's only read like the comic book version of 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 like German history. And it's mm-hmm. it's yeah, like like Nazi Germany was ridiculously patriarchal. They believed that women needed to take a traditional role, that they needed to live up to the standards to like the no, uh, de- demure the standards number, of the past. Do you, do you think was forced? Sorry, you're you're roboting again, so I didn't hear what you said. Do you think the nuclear fa- the, do you think the nuclear family was forced in Nazi Germany? Oh, I don't know. Does that matter? Yeah, I mean, you were talking about women doing back to their natural role. Like, I would. Think I mean, had- yeah, they were pretty obsessed with. They were pretty obsessed with women taking a a demure position of modesty. That was like very well documented. Uh, yeah, they believed in promoting the nuclear family. Nothing was a uh, force to women to do that, though. That's why women employment went up so much. I'm sorry, that's ridiculous. The idea that it's like that, like no, yeah. No, Enforced. wait, wait, wait. Hold on a second. Before you run off on something, the reason why f- w- the employment of women went up in every single country in the world during the war is because the mm-hmm. men are gone. This is literally like again well, I don't a know. basic if, fact if, of history. If, like you, you like if the Nazis, no, if the Nazis like hated women so much. Wait, wait. They would do you like, think? Wait, do you think that women women working is a good sign? Is like a good example of like women being liberated in a society just because they have a job? No, that's like a very but, liberal mean, position to me. What's a liberal? Like position? the idea that like, oh, a woman has a job, that means she's liberated. It would make sense to me though if Nazis like wanted women to go back to their natural wo- role, they wouldn't let women work at all. Wait, but they need somebody to work during a war. That happened in every country. But, America, uh, America. Wait a second. America was highly patri- Wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. America was highly patriarchal and also had traditionalistic elements. We were not very good to women um in in during the time of world war ii but guess what when lots and lots of women got employment during the war because as it turns out when all of the men are gone there needs to be somebody to make bullets there needs to be somebody to put boats together because the men are in war are at war so that doesn't like female employment just simply does not like does not associate with the position of women ideologically in that society and german society was very very obsessed um with the idea of like women being home like ultimately in the long run homemakers obviously in the middle of a war that's not going to be the case but that was absolutely talked about very extensively by by um across germany I mean, the Volk was like, this is not like a matter of like, like, this is not contested history. Like the obsession, the obsession with traditional family structures in Germany was, was very much, uh, was very, very well recognized. Like this has been recognized by historians of all stripes. Promoted the nuclear family with, um, the, um, with giving loans to newlyweds. But I mean, I'm talking about pre-war Germany right now. Okay. Not like. I mean, war, none of this women. has has any impact on what I what I stated. Like all of this was like you, you kind of you said women employment goes up because men go away. I was talking about pre war Germany. Uh, pre war Germany, which was in the throes of an economic uh, of of an of economic devastation. Did you realize there was post war Nazi? There was a pre war Germany, and then like during the war Nazi Germany. Right? Yeah, obviously. Wait, yeah, exactly. like, so, do, do you think that was a gotcha? Point. Yeah, like, Germany was going through the Great Depression just like we were. I don't care about gotchas. That's stupid. But no, when, um, when, uh, when the, uh, um, employment went up, 
um it was during like pre-war did you know like, that did you know that female employment went up in america as well during the great depression despite us being a a grossly patriarchal society because guess sure. what when when everybody is starving everyone has to work whether they want to or not fucking god when you said like germany was obsessed with the nuclear family i thought you meant i didn't like, they say were they were you said that i said that i said that germany was no, obsessed said, with hyper patriarchal they, were... they were hyper patriarchal and they were highly traditionalistic i don't know that i don't even know do i don't mean? even know when the concept of the nuclear family like came to be um but i'm sure they had some equivalent um no so what yeah. so they were obsessed with like well you said they were obsessed with women's being women being in their moderate role yeah yeah I absolutely thought, they were obsessed with modesty yeah, yeah, yeah. this was something that was taught in like um like sure, a lot I'm of fine. the hitler youth stuff they were they were obsessed with women being modest and have and like they had you know um like like all of this sort of like hyper hyper traditionalistic hyper modesty was like pushed on women so yeah absolutely 100 percent. but what i thought you meant like that is that they were also like forcing women not to do stuff Oh, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I don't know what it means. Like when, when they, when you say like forcing women not to do stuff, I think that I like, mean, I think that like you, having societal you, expectations that women be like, um, you know, subservient and, um, a subservient and, uh, and like to this, to the country and to their husbands as a result of that. And also, um, that women be modest and control their appearance so that they don't like, you know, tempt men and stuff like that. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's imposing a lot of control on, on women. Absolutely. Sorry. I thought you yeah. meant, I thought you meant like Nazis were like making women like not work. I'm sorry. I misunderstood. No, you. I mean, I don't think that, I don't believe that working is a, like a good, I like a good example, like a good way of judging whether women are liberated in a society or not. Again, like, lots of lots of women worked during the great depression here but that was because families would starve if they didn't not because of like women were liberated in fact li women weren't even allowed to have their own bank accounts without a husband signing off until like the fucking 60s or something i thought women still couldn't do that right to this day uh, yeah i'm god i know um Damn. i mean i don't think women are still liberated right now oh i don't think that... they are either i mean obviously i talk Here about we... feminism a lot but yeah to be fair, I so are you a big feminist then? Um, yeah, for the most part. Damn. Um, interesting mix there. Yeah. How do you how do you like how do you square the like historical like patriarchalness of of fascist regimes, um, with with? Yeah, I think true. Like the Falange, like they advocated for women in labor unions. Like like Mosley, like when he started talking about workplace and democracy, he advocated for women being like representations of workers. Like the, the only the only example we have was uniquely Nazis. Like, um, I think it was unique the, to the Nazis. Like, I mean, I would argue that like America under Trump, America was fascist. What's that? America isn't fascist, nor has ever been fascist. I mean, I think it's pushed pretty close. Um, uh, I'm, I I think America has pushed pretty close, but also like uh, Modi's government in India right now is um is pretty. Um, no, there's fashion. no current. Wait, is it true show. that Mosley was a raging anti Semite? Is that true? No, that's objectively not true. Oh, wow. Like, objectively, yeah. Damn. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. I don't really know who this guy is. Like, I don't know much about this guy, but, um, yeah. but yeah, Mosley, somebody in my chat mentioned that, that they were a uh, raging anti Semite, which would not no, come no, as a surprise Mosley, to me, to be honest. Mosley, Mosley, in a news interview, was asked about how he felt about Jews. Uh, and he said that he, he said that some Jews were bad, but he didn't judge Jews as like a collective. Hmm. Um, and he, yeah, he was in a rage and Um, that's, that's just used to, you know, scream at like, that's usually just a word, um, people call like a lot of fascists. Oh, um, interesting. Hey, thanks for that. PD Pete. I got a quote from Goring, the nine commandments for the workers struggle, uh, from Herman Goring of the Nazi regime three to the German woman, take hold of the cooking pan, the dust pan and the broom and marry a man. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is that supposed to be like a gotcha there no go no again. i'm just saying like uh the idea that like that nazi germany wasn't like highly patriarchal and also like fascist no, they, is like, they yeah. were uh for sure yeah yeah um sexist yeah for um, sure i mean that, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. pretty clear yeah but, but that doesn't matter um i don't think saying that one fascist country uh you know telling women to like children and be in the kitchen is like a representation of fascist like so so if that's the case um then let's let's you know i i don't want to play the game of like 
uh, of like, it, well, this isn't the real fascism or whatever. So then, what is it? What is no, the worldview? What is the worldview that you look at then? Then what is it that you want to see in the it, world outside of like enforcing English as a language? Oh, like some like once again like policies I want to pass. Sure. Yeah. Let's see what what is your ideal like world in that mind? What do you what does fascism mean to you? Oh, what's fascism? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna pull out a quote from um, Benito Mussolini in the uh, in the doctrine of fascism. Wait, I thought. Hold on a second, though. I thought that like I thought that you said that Mussolini and Hitler weren't good examples of fascists, but now you're quoting Mussolini. Uh, I I think Hitler wasn't. Uh, Mussolini, like his idea things that he laid out for fascism was okay um he was really really stupid when it came to like sorry you're roboting again i couldn't hear what you said for the last like three or four seconds um so i think here uh, you're you're actually roboting so much can you can you disconnect and then reconnect to the waiting room and i'll pull you back in because i think your discord might be like sure hold on sure Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Um, I can't hear you if you can hear me. Uh. Can you hear me now? Hello. Try Hello. Re- hey, okay, now I can hear you. There, there. Sure. So Mussolini, like his ideological, like found, like what he based, like his writings and the doctrine of fascism were pretty good. Um, he was really stupid when it came to war. Uh, invading Greece was not good. Um, yeah, that's what I would say about Mussolini. Oh. Mussolini has a was a very has a weird history though. But yeah. no. So I do have some quotes here. I'm being given some quotes by um Mosley. Mm, uh, God. Yeah, here we go. We got one here. During the 1930s, Mosley led Britain's virulently anti-Semitic fascist movement whose street fighters, known as Black Shirts, were notorious for their violence against Jews and left-wing opponents. He was on friendly terms with Mussolini, and Hitler was the guest of honor at his second wedding. And then we also have a quote here. At one of the new party meetings in Leicester in April 1935, he stated, For the first time, I openly and publicly challenge the Jewish interests of this country, who, who are commanding the commerce, commanding the press, commanding the cinema, dominating the city of London, killing industry with their sweatshops. These great interests are not intimidating and will not intimidate the fascist movement of the modern era, he said, referring to his own movement. Um, so opposed, it sounds like – that sounds like a, an anti-Semite to me. Sure. So he opposed. So in his view, he thought Jews were um, constructing like a World War Two. And uh, he was like, I don't like Well, this. that's what isn't that the um, same thing Hitler did? Like Hitler had those same exact you views. Blamed World, you think Hitler blamed the Jews on World War Two? Uh, Hitler. Wait. Hitler blamed the Yes. Hitler blamed the Jews for World it, War One. No, I didn't say anything about World War One. I. I said World War Two. Wait. Do, do, do you think that it matters which war they're blaming them for? No, I said Mosley. You said, wait, no, you said Hitler did the same thing Mosley I did. said Hitler no, did basically the same thing. Blaming Jews no, for said, the undermining of a country is basically the exact same thing. There's no, no there's what, no functional difference there. What Mosley what was doing, he said he was pretty much saying Jews, uh, he said pretty much he was saying Jews are what are, you know, leading up to World War II. Um, they're not like leading uh they won't he was pretty much saying he thought jews were getting england involved with world war ii okay to me that sounds basically the exact same thing as blaming the jews for world war one it sounds like the exact same anti-semitism we hear today like accusing a hyper minority in a country of secretly uh using the cinema let's see let's use his words again the cinema the commerce the press and the city of london um like this is just ant that's just raw anti-semitism that's raw anti-Semitism. Like, you realize sure. that's, like, really kind of fucked, right? Hold on. Where's... Can I send... Can I send you something real quick? Uh, sure. Just send it into the stream call-in chat in the server. Sure. So here is what Mosley... Here was, like... Here's, like, a just a clip of Mosley about what he was... There's, like, a video clip of Mosley talking about Jews. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, again, like... 
Nazis hide their power level all the time. If it looks like his actions and his rhetoric was strongly like anti-Semitic, I feel like that would be pretty problematic. Also, if his like street gang, the black shirts, like if these people were regularly targeting Jewish people, I don't think I care what he says no, in, like, when he's not, prettied up, right? When he when he puts on the lipstick true. and whatever, that, like does that? That is not what the black shirts did. Like actually, there was a battle. Fuck, what was this called? Hold on. Battle. When I hear like. I don't know. I have a. I, I don't have a real reason to believe that a group known as the Black Shirts weren't strongly anti-Semitic. And now I'm not exactly a hundred percent familiar with this with this history, so I'm open to being a little wrong. But I don't know. A fascist, a fascist street gang. That sounds like unironically exactly the same. Gang. They weren't some fascist street gang. Uh, Mosley got was like pretty much being threatened by a bunch of communists to get beat up on the regular. Mm, um, so he pretty yeah, much they always got, blame it on the communists, right? It was uh, them that who is did it first, right? Yeah, that is exactly what happened. Communists have been known to be very brutal people. Mm. Like before the Spanish Civil War, they were killing like priests. Um, that's why the Falange came up was defend you know uh, Spain from communists. Uh, same thing with the black shirts. Uh, it I was feel much like you have a very one sided view of history. I think. Do you think I that's think possible? You, do you think you do not really honestly i, I, I don't re think i really don't like i mean i've spent a lot of time studying history and like i don't really have like these illusions about historical figures who <laughs> illusions i don't have any illusions. i mean i don't know like first first you were saying like oh mosley is so based and then we find out like he actually yeah. he actually regularly used like anti-semitic rhetoric and that he his... never regularly did it you found like one quote i don't know him. there's like these are these are pretty public quotes like All it's right, just I'll it seems it. to me it seems what it seems I'll like to me I'll is I'll... like you're willing to whitewash like some pretty concerning shit in these things whitewash. what's that yeah, whitewash, no. like clean out, you're like you're trying to hide certain things that are inconvenient to your narrative. Can I, can I read this to you real quick then? Sure. On March 15th, uh, 1965, Mosley sent a letter to a representative in Parliament. Uh -huh. Within the he laid out a point explaining why he would be terminated from the party. Point five said anti-Semitism. Certainly untrue that we are anti-Semitic. And members who have been instead on pursuing such policies have been expelled. So he literally was kicking out people of his party. Wait, but this is 1965, right? Like this guy was – like this is like way later on in his life. Like when he was politically yeah, active, like when he, he was, was politically no. active, when he was an like, active fascist, he was advocating he was an, for these things. He was an active fascist throughout his, throughout his, all of his life, and he was politically active till he died. Right, um, but you do realize that, like, don't that somebody, like, like when, when they're when they're older and trying to like clean up their image, or maybe they've had some changes of heart, like saying, "Oh, this is what I think now," versus when yeah, they were people, politically active yeah, in the UK. Move on. Yeah, people move on. You know, when they get yeah, older. Yeah, but I mean, but you're move. advocating for his. You're you've been advocating this whole time for his for his political teachings, which we now are finding out yeah, that his that his most relevant. Well, no, but his most relevant political teachings, the stuff that he did in his prime when he was actually politically relevant, most, not when wait, he was a retired old man. You think his most politically relevant point was anti-Semitism? No, 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 no. You're not listening to me. When he was, when he was, at, when he had the ability to, when he was advocating, when he was out on the streets doing this stuff, when he was, you know, being in, being a pol politically involved, it appears that he was pretty regularly leaning on anti-Semitic tropes in order to fuel himself. So what he says again, like what he says in like a a a, a press statement in 1965, is n not really that relevant if he was stoking anti-Jewish sentiment for most of his life he wasn't doing it for most of his life i'm sure you can find a few quotes on mosley um that said some pretty anti-semitic stuff i think you can I do that with like i think you could literally everybody i don't um, think so like i don't yeah, i don't think you could find any like really like like i don't think i, I don't think i've ever said anything like super anti-semitic maybe not you i didn't say yeah. you I but said i'm just people. saying like i don't think the idea that like every single politician was anti-semitic is like true in fact, there's a lot of yeah, like I don't I know. Were, I said there were a lot of big politicians during that time, and uh, his time before that uh, were very were uh, were very um, anti-Semitic. Yeah. Well. Okay. So. Um, and even, even if he had like some anti-Semitic quotes, that wasn't like a big point of his ideology. I mean, that's the thing, though. It does seem to be like it was a little bit of his ideology. Like he. Have you 
Yeah. All right. So if you want to get a good perspective on what Mosley advocated for, uh, read the hundred and uh, read fascism, a uh, hundred questions and answered where Mosley goes over like the most important things he wants to do. for okay. Britain. Well, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, that sounds like a bit of a, of a read that I can do at uh, some point in the future if I, if I decide to, to do that. But, um, do you recognize where the concern comes from? Right. Like if, oh, if, if, was, if I go, if I say, if you say no fascism is actually good and I go, well, you know, the most historical examples of fascism were really, really bad. Like pretty much some of the worst types of countries that we've seen in the past. And then, uh, and then you go, well, I don't like those ones. And then you give me another one. And then that one turns out was really closely associated with the, the bad one that I mentioned before. And also shared a lot of the same rhetoric. You see where that concern comes up, right? You can say that with almost like a lot like you're communist, right? Uh, I mean, I don't really go by that I, like label like at all. Like I, I generally consider myself a leftist with like um, with with yeah, like so anarchist I philosophical leanings. I don't really like I'm not really married to any specific label um, because I don't really think it's that helpful. So you're an anarchist with leftist leaning or a leftist with anarchist leanings. Yeah, right? yeah, sure. You familiar with what like the anarchists did in the Spanish Civil War? Oh, I mean. I'm familiar with a lot of different things. Yeah, there's like lots of things that have happened in the past. Does that like, what does that have to do with anything? What I'm getting, like, you at don't even know like what type, like, 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 anarchism is a pretty like old. You're a animal. left yeah. anarchist. That's what the same like thing the Republic was in the uh, Spanish Civil War. Sure. It was a bunch of like anarchist left. They were like anarcho syndicalists and comms. Sure. Okay. And it was like you know anarchists on the left. Yeah. Okay. And did they ever like? I don't know. Did they ever fucking kill six million Jews? Because I'm feeling they didn't. They, I'm kill feeling six they didn't. Million yeah. Jews, but they did slaughter a lot of priests. Maybe. I mean, that might. That, I don't know about that. Maybe. Maybe they did. I don't know. No. No. Uh, there's no maybe. Okay. You know. <laughs> what happens if I just said, you know what? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe the Nazis killed like six million Jews. Well, I, you mean, would I mean, there's it. like a there's like a lot of historical precedent. Like World War Two is one of the most like it is probably the most like traumatic event that the I, western I know, world has experienced yeah, so yeah. yeah like sorry I, I, yeah like my, my yeah, the minutiae yeah. of like of like conflict in like anarchist spain in like 1920 is not uh the same level of like i don't have the same level of concern about that but than I, the literal I, most impactful war in the last 100 years actually the spanish war is kind of what like eh, it, it it accelerated some stuff 1930s sorry yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah i mean maybe but, there's a lot i mean again you do do you recognize there's like a bit of a difference in 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 scope there like there's been yeah. all kinds of conflicts all over the world like i don't have historical yeah. knowledge about all of them no I, what i'm saying though is yeah. that like there's been some fascists that did awful really really awful stuff a lot of uh, them in fact it's, th i mean this is the thing like the, the to me what it looks like is that the the ideology of fascism is sort of uh structurally um seems to be structurally motivated towards uh some pretty bad outcomes and i haven't really seen i haven't really heard anything tonight that really convinces me to the other like i do realize that like i want to hear what your sort of vision of this is but it seems like at every point we run into these issues where it's like okay so how is this not going to become the exact same thing you said it was like with an obsession of like of enforcing language and like a certain idea of culture these seem like the exact like um the, it seems you, like the exact ingredients for wait, the sort wait. of perfect storm of of nazism you think, you think me wanting to institute like a national language is the same thing as nazis like saying if you're not uh ethnic german you're getting slaughtered do you think that's the same thing no 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 i but i think that they lead to i think that they're the the first steps for sure i think that that's, when you start to build the idea of what an ideal um, like what an ideal cultural like uh, cultural agent is and when you enforce a language those are the first steps to building a supremacist culture yeah that that's really stupid um i don't think it is actually i think it's really stupid i to mean suggest you could that. say it's stupid but I, that don't you I, doesn't that doesn't that kind of weaken your argument if that's the only thing you can say against that like don't you realize own. wait like you you acknowledge that your... hold on a second like you acknowledge that like nazism didn't just appear out of thin air right yeah, it led to um, – what it led to was the Treaty of Versailles, a loss of World War II, and pretty much – I mean, if you want me to be honest with you, it's just like a bunch of bad shit happened. Well, yeah, but, but what I'm saying is that not, Nazism didn't come out of nowhere. Like it had sure. things that, le that led up to it. Nothing, it had nothing to do 
with uh, nationalism coming to a rise and then Nazis like having opportunities. I off of it. strongly disagree with that, and I think that most historians would also agree with me on that. As far as most uh, historians that I've read uh, have have yeah, like like because um like like you do realize that like without a nationalistic center like there would have not have been a nazi well, movement the nazi movement well, was highly nationalistic like highly well, nationalistic what large nationalist movement uh led um what 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 nationalist movement led to the nazis uh succeeding in the wait literally wait the literally. nazis are literally they were literally the national socialist party they fought for a a uh, a a German a strong German nation, they were highly nationalist. It was all over no, the that's rhetoric. Not my, no, that's not what I said. I Sorry, said, what'd you what you say? Yeah, I said what nationalist movement did the Nazis succeed? Like you said, it led up to a bunch of nationalist things happen uh, that led to the Nazis forming. Uh, what nationalist? Wait, yeah, like Hitler's Hitler had like like ten years before the Nazi Party even took power. The whole beer hall putsch was was a was a nationalist. Wait, wait. Was a, a nationalist, um, a, a group of, of of German nationalists led by Hitler at the time, um, were uh, rose up and and fucking um, had a, a, a what's it called a, a like an uprising in a uh, in a in in a beer hall that was being used for voting or something along those lines. I don't remember all of the exact details. Um, they were there was like a, a, an enormous nope. amount of that, and previous to that, like. Um, World War One had been enacted on nationalist lines as well. Like the Kaiser was highly like it, it, it's absurd to argue that like the literal Kaiser of Germany, who you who united the Germans under a shared German identity, wasn't nationalist. That's not what I said. I meant to say like what some things the state did that was nationalist that led to the Nazis rising. Well, I mean, they did a lot of things, right? There was a, a highly, like, a high focus, and there was pressure in, in through education to focus on, like, um, on on understanding, like, German as a central, as, like, a central um, language and a unifying language. There was a focus on the, um, the history, the, the so-called history of, of Germany, which was, um, you know, which was, of course— uh, presented in a um, very slanted light, as as is always the case with these movements. There was uh, massive cultural programs that were designed around cultivating strong German identity, such you know, as um, Mar- like Hitler's youth Why? and other things like that. The Hitler youth. Wait, wait, wait! The Weimar Republic did that. What's that? The Weimar Republic did no, that. I don't, I don't know the specifics of which policies were put into place by the Weimar Republic. What I'm saying is that what nationalist yeah. things did the Weimar Republic do that led to the Nazi? What led to Nazi Germany? Well, it wasn't just the, it's not just the Weimar Republic. Like we're talking no, about, what? these forces were moving throughout Germany, in, in like this is well recognized. Like the like yeah. the like, what was the thing with the K you said? What's that? What was the thing with the K that you said? K, wait the yeah, like, the, Ki- the Kaiser? That yeah, was the like Kaiser. World War One. Yeah, he was like the yeah, leader. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like like yeah, highly well, nationalistic, I, highly racist individual who, um, who yeah, <laughs> whose rhetoric whose rhetoric was um was centered around Germany being like a, the dominant force of Europe. That is highly nationalistic. Yeah, I, like I don't know, like I don't know about like speci- like again, uh, like there's no way I'm not a historian, so it's like it's not my my primary thing to be able to go. Yeah, like the the this this bill was passed, but there was a very very clear focus in through German society that has been well well talked about by historians um who um of, of, of a focus on on germany as a as a uh, as the as this just proud upstanding nation um and that was being usurped by by you know degenerate um these sort of like degenerate non-german folks like that was a huge part of it like the Kaz, wait. Do you oh, think here we go. Kaz- here's here's a nice quote. The government established after World War One, the the Weimar Republic established a law of nationality that was based on pre unification no- notions of the German Volk as an ethno racial group defined more by heredity th- than modern notions of citizenship. The laws were intended to include Germans who had immigrated and to exclude immigrant groups. These laws remained the basis of German citizenship until after reunification. Hey, thank you, Karatatis. I appreciate um I appreciate that particular quote yeah this is exactly the type of stuff i'm talking about like while i can't quote you individual bills because i'm not like i'm literally like you'd need to be a historian to know like the exact uh bills that were being passed by the weimar republic like this was a this is a universally recognized fact of fascism sure yeah i don't think i don't know the why sure i don't know how the weimar republic saying that um germany 
uh, the German nationality is like an ethnic thing has like anything to do with like me saying I want a national language. Wait, wait, no, wait. You're 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 doing this whole thing where like you're you're refusing to acknowledge that like there are steps to these to this process that like sure. that often sure. start that often start sure. that often yeah, sure, sure. that often sure. start like I was trying to say that often start as as Karatidis so kindly shared in chat that often start with the definition of who a German is of who a um of of, of who an American is and they you're define gonna have that to prove, yeah you're gonna have to prove to me that that's what led that's what gave the Nazis inspiration well I mean no I don't actually you do. no, correlation I really causation. don't I think that we can you make a, I think we can make an argument we for can, as to why these sure. wait wait how do you have hold on there is a way that I can do this. How do you determine? How do you determine who is a you know a member of X nationality? How, just, how do you determine that? I just told you how I determine it. Okay. How do you do it? People in the territory. Okay. So that means that by your definition, okay, the if it is just wait, wait, hold on a second. If it is just a matter of being in that territory, then I would argue that you have no right with through which to um impose english as the national language because if it if if nationality the nationality belongs to anybody who lives in a geographical location then people who speak spanish as their primary language have just as much of a claim to nationality as people who speak english as their national language sure sure, sure. so sure. either there is either your like your worldview isn't actually like fitting up to the definition of, of, of fascism or you have an inconsistency there somewhere no it's just like when i said like recognize a national language i was like you know maybe we can do this it's not that my worldview doesn't match up with like fascism it's uh it's just that i mean it does that's how i live my life like a fascist it's just i like the policies i support aren't that fascistic okay well, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm not a huge, uh, I'm not like a, a big fan of like life, of like a lifestyle fascism. To me, it seems like a pretty Based mentally, up. pretty mentally unhealthy way of living. No, but Loving, hating suicide is like an unhealthy way of living. I mean, I don't think that that is like a, a tenet of, of, uh, of that fascism. That's, Sorry, that's what, like uh, wait, there's that's, lots of people. There's lots of every single worldview in the world. Uh, uh -huh. Every single worldview um, is going to say that they like that they're like we believe in living life and not killing yourself. Like I can't think of the, besides you, besides what, like literal what like what do you think? What do you think, what do you think, he, what do you think Mimi Frigo means? What's that? What do you think Mimi Frigo means? Uh, that sounds like a line from Tim and Eric. No, it was Italian, and it means I don't give a damn. Okay. And it was like what What's the that supposed to mean to me? <laughs> it was the um, it was like the slogan. Um, it was the it was like scrolled on the bandages, uh, of the wounded. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What it was that, a proud. What, what does that mean in any of this? Yeah, I to get into. So I'm gonna start. I'm gonna quote the. Uh, I'm gonna quote the. Um, the doctrine of fascism uh it is an act of philosophy not only stoic it is a summary of a doctrine not only political it is an education and strife and an acceptance of the risk which it has carried it is a new style of italian life it is thus that the fascist loves and accepts life ignores and disdains suicide understands life as a duty a lifting up a conquest Something to be filled in and situ and sustained on a high plane, a thing that has to be lived through for its own sake. Okay, this but, sounds like this just sounds above, like any any like self help book in the world. Like I feel like um I feel like I could pick up a like a uh like the secret and read something that is identical to that. Like I don't know what any of this is supposed to mean to me. Like this just yeah. sounds like 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 but, but dollar store dollar store generic philosophy. Like don't you be ask, don't kill yourself. It's bad if you know it's bad if you die. Like that'd be sad. Like sure. I feel like I could accomplish that with much less words and with 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 significant less risk of um, turning my country into fucking Nazi Germany. Sure. So that's you asked me what like living life like a fascist was, and I told no, you. no, I didn't ask you that. I said I think that um, 
I, I said I, I don't really care. Like, there's lots of people uh, who think that like living life as a ex or whatever is is all kinds of things. I don't. I just. I think the idea of like lifestyle fascism seems a little bit silly to me, and it seems unhealthy to me. It seems unhealthy uh, to like tie your identity and your personality to a worldview that has been predominantly characterized by um, by anti-Semitism, hatred, and ultranationalism. Sure, I yeah. don't really care what you think. Well, oh, that's fine. I mean, well, you do because you did come on my show to talk to me, so you do yeah, you do care I, a little yeah. bit. Sure, I don't care what you think about like the lifestyle of fascism. Yeah, I mean, sure. If you uh, if you think that that's like a healthy way to live, if it helps you or whatever, that's fine. I just uh, it actually know, pulled me out of depression. What's that? It pulled me out of depression. Oh, that's fine. I'm sure there's there's lots of things that pull people out of depression. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a good uh, long term solution. Um, like it's been all right so far. What's that? It's been all right for me so far. Oh, that's fine. Um, uh, that sounds great. I hope it doesn't pull you back into it or anything like that. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, HRT pulls a lot of people out of depression. That works too. But also, what? like, what? also, you, you're you're only 15. Like, I. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So you got a lot of life still left to live. I wouldn't, I wouldn't conclude that fascism is the answer to everything quite yet. Oh no! Well, the the answer to everything truly ah, is here not... we go. Jesus, right? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I had to. Yeah. Well, listen, 15 year old me and you would probably agree on that. Uh, but listen, life is Man, long, and damn. you have much to learn. So just keep cheat, keep asking questions, and don't settle for fucking bullshit. Okay. Yo, so true. Yo, I got one question though. Sure. How do you feel about Biden bombing Syria? Oh, it sounds like typical uh dem yeah. bullshit. Yeah. Would you would we agree can we agree on one thing? What? Capitalism's like cringe. Uh yeah, but probably we probably think about it for different reasons. Uh you probably Why think you that you I'm gonna just take a small hazard a guess here that you think capitalism is cringe because it would be better if we had like a Fuhrer or somebody. Um Whereas right. I think that capitalism is cringe because it crushes people every single day, forcing them to live lives that make them miserable. And I would advocate for a uh, a worldview. I would advocate for a world in which in which in which people can be liberated and not have to become crushed into the machinery of the state. But you know, it's similar, I guess. We both dislike capitalism. I feel like. Can you be honest for one second? I'll, all right, can I explain to you why I don't like capitalism? Then I gotta go. Sure, but can you ask? Can you answer one question for me? Sure, are you like, are, like, just be honest with this? Are you like flirting with like not like not Nazbolism? No, national Bolshevism is stupid. Okay. Um, but but I, is it something similar? Are you like thinking like like you know communo fascism kind of thing that you're gonna like aim for? Where you're like, I hate, I hate, hate corporations, but it sure would be great if like all these good good old boy American like english speakers were just in charge of everything is that like you're not going for that are you no 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 no. uh uh i don't like capitalism um do you know you know about exploitation right yeah of course obviously that well but i mean you you do realize that capitalism isn't the only way that people are exploited right i mean in an economic sense kind of well, it's not the only way, right? Like, because kings, kings and queens definitely exploited well, we their people. Well, feudalism too, but I'm not. I don't agree with feudalism. Right, but I mean, but certainly fascism. I mean, I don't know. Maybe your special like brand of fascism. Maybe like the corporatist boy brand of fascism. Na- it's national syndicalist. What? National syndicalist. That's my economic system. So, what do you believe? What do you actually? What does that mean to you? Um, you know about market socialism? I feel like you're memeing on me at this point. I'm not. I'm being dead serious. Uh, workers seizing the means of production through labor unions uh, with an authoritarian state. Um, now I got to go. It's been nice talking to you. All right. Have a good night. You too. Bye. Uh... That was funny. All right, listen, listen, that was fun.